Beach Inoculus species Panama, formerly known as the Ami species Panama, which in the hobby is often referred to by the common name gold-banded sunburst dwarf tarantula, is a New World terrestrial tarantula that is endemic to the Central American country of Panama. This species was most recently observed around the La Chirera area, where the weather is described as hot and oppressive year-round. With temperatures between 75 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit, rarely dropping below 72 degrees or going over 92 degrees, the temperatures remain fairly constant in this range year-round, and the humidity in the region varies throughout the year, but averages around 70 to 80 percent. This is a slow-growing dwarf tarantula that is relatively new to the hobby. Until recently, they were somewhat rare in the U.S., though they are beginning to grow in popularity. In species Panama is a gorgeous and unique-looking tarantula, and information on this species is not easy to come by. This species recently went through a taxonomic change as Ami was discovered to essentially belong to a genus already described as Nichinoculus. There is still a lot of research going on regarding the species in this genus and hopefully more detailed information will come out about these teas in the near future. And undoubtedly there will be further name changes as researchers learn more and more accurately identify these species. Being a dwarf tarantula, this species will not grow very large. Females only grow to about two and a half to three inches in size, with males being a little smaller. As slings, these spiders are extremely small and take a while to grow into their adult size. And with the lack of information readily available online, the husbandry of this species has been difficult for many people to figure out. As with most new species introduced into the hobby, we will have to adapt our husbandry as more information comes out from either scientific research or through the cumulative knowledge of fellow keepers sharing their experience keeping this tea in captivity. I have combed the internet and talked to many other keepers that have this species in their collections and combined that with my own experiences to detail the ideal husbandry for this species at this time. But bear in mind this may change over time as more details regarding the tarantula come to light. I keep my slings in a small dram vial filled at least two-thirds the way up with substrate and keep the substrate damp but not swampy or overly moist. I put in a little bit of sphagnum moss to help maintain a higher humidity level and for the sling to use as a hide when it wants to retreat to safety. I use a thumbtack to make some holes in the lid of the dram vial so there is some air circulation which helps lower the risk of mold but I am very mindful to not make the ventilation holes too large as the sling could escape if you're not careful. I keep the enclosure in my Spiderling climate controlled setup that keeps the ambient room temperature at about 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius which is slightly warmer than what I keep my adult and juvenile tarantulas. When they have outgrown that dram vial, I move them into a basic spider lane acrylic enclosure and provide more width than height. Again, I fill the enclosure up at least two thirds with substrate and occasionally pour some water down the corner of the enclosure to keep the bottom layers of the substrate damp while allowing the top layer to stay dry, which provides ample humidity without making the enclosure swampy. I provide a hide and small water dish and place some sphagnum moss in the enclosure to help maintain a little added humidity. Once they have outgrown that enclosure, I will move them into an acrylic juvenile enclosure with more width than height. Again, I provide a water dish and hide, some fake plants, and sphagnum moss. I still keep the bottom layers of substrate more damp and allow the top level to stay mostly dry. And for my adult female, once she was beginning to look a little too cramped in her juvenile enclosure, I moved her into a nano-wide exoterra enclosure, which seems to provide more than enough space for her. I provide a hide and some fake plants, as well as a large water dish and sphagnum moss. I keep the bottom layer of substrate damp and allow the top to remain dry. 
As a juvenile and adult, I keep this tarantula at the same room temperature I keep most of my tarantulas, which is 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're comfortable, your tarantulas are comfortable. Now this is a slightly shy tarantula, and mine spends half the time in her hide, though she doesn't do much burrowing. When approaching a molt, I have observed her webbing up the mouth of the hide and using a little substrate and moss to make a dirt curtain. But she hasn't really dug down and created a wall of substrate like some species will do when sealing off their burrow. Once she has molted and hardened up, she emerges from her hide and spends most of her time out on display, usually relaxing around the water dish or on the top of her cork bark hide. I have tried wetting down one half of the substrate to see if she prefers the dry substrate or the damp substrate, and she seems to go back and forth between the two with no observable preference for one over the other. For the most part, this species is docile and relaxed, but when constantly annoyed or startled, they are capable of bolting and quickly moving across their enclosure, up the side and escaping before you have much time to react. When prodded to move in one direction using a paintbrush or plastic straw from behind, this species is very stubborn and will slowly move forward and sometimes just refuses to move at all. Though anytime I try to direct her movement from the front, using a straw gently on her front legs to coax her into moving to the side or backwards, she is very quick to attack the straw and has even given me a threat pose once or twice. I don't handle my tarantulas, but if I ever had to pick her up for any reason, I would be very cautious trying to handle her coming from the front. Usually this tea has an amazing feeding response, but not a huge appetite. Usually she quickly attacks the first feeder I drop into her enclosure, but if I try to feed her a second one, it usually goes ignored and I remove it the next day. As far as feeding, I feed my spiderling flightless fruit flies when they are under a half an inch, about twice a week. The trick is to place your container of flightless fruit flies in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes prior to feeding the sling. Then when you remove the flies, they are very lethargic and barely moving at all. I knock a few of them out into a cup and quickly drop them into the spiderling enclosure. Once the flies warm up, they become very active again and are quickly taken down by the sling. If you do not have access to flightless fruit flies, you can also rip off cricket legs and drop them in for the slings as they are scavengers at this size. You can also pre-kill small crickets or roaches by cutting them in half and dropping in a little piece for your sling. If you use this method, I suggest not dropping in the head of the cricket, mealworm, or roach, as sometimes the head part of the body will still move around and can possibly bite your smallest slings. Also, be sure to check on your slings the next day and remove any uneaten leftovers to avoid mold and mite infestations. For juveniles over one and a quarter inch or three centimeters, I feed two or three small crickets once a week. This spider can be very finicky, so if they don't eat the crickets within 24 hours, I remove any uneaten prey and try again in a week or two. Sometimes all I can get them to eat is one or two small crickets every two or three weeks. As the size of the crickets can be somewhat relative, I typically feed tarantulas at this size crickets or roaches about a half to two-thirds the size of the spider. For my adult, I feed her about two to three medium crickets or one large cricket every two to three weeks. Again, she isn't the biggest eater, so sometimes she will go two to three months without taking a cricket, but it is usually because she is in pre-molt. Once she is molted, I wait about 10 to 14 days for her to harden up before offering her any prey. <coughs> this is one of my favorite New World tarantulas, and I expect it to become much more popular in the hobby as time goes on. Dwarf tarantulas are fascinating to me because they are so small when full grown, but still have all the characteristics of larger tarantulas, like intricate and colorful markings and powerful feeding responses. Being a New World Tarantula, this little species does have type 1 urticating hairs, but in all my interactions with mine, even when I have irritated her to the point she bolts or attacks the paintbrush, mine has never kicked any hairs at me, and I have never noticed any itching or discomfort after rehousing or interacting with her. Dwarf Tarantulas are also nice because it gives me the ability to have multiple full-grown adult tarantulas in my collection that don't take up a whole lot of space. The species will never really need any enclosure larger than an 8x8x8 setup like I have her in now, 
and some may even get away with keeping theirs in something slightly smaller. This is a gorgeous tarantula that I am always quick to show off with the gold bands on the legs which fade from black by the body to a more deep dark blue at the ends and has that spattering of colors on the abdomen that really makes this species one of a kind. This is such a cool tarantula. I got mine a while ago from Fear Not Tarantulas. I got an adult female. I also have a small spiderling in my collection. If you don't have one of these, I would highly suggest it. These dwarf tarantulas are very cool. Now, not everybody is a fan of these teeth. Some people like the bigger ones or the brighter colors, but in my opinion, you can't go wrong with these smaller tarantulas. The reason I covered this species this week is because there was a lot of people in the Facebook group as well as in the comments down below a lot of these videos I've been making asking for some husbandry tips on the Ami species Panama. I was surprised when I was looking online how little information there is out there. In fact, there was only like two videos on YouTube and they were both just unboxing. So while doing my research and trying to get as much information as I could on the species, I realized there was like literally no care sheets out there. There were a few threads on arachno boards and some other people talking talking about it on different social medias, but there wasn't any like written out care sheet or really even much information. I had to get a lot of this information through scientific research papers, which I'll link below down in the description if you have any interest in reading them. Also, my friend Lewis helped me out a lot doing some of this research on the climate and exactly where in Panama this species originates. So thank you, Lewis. Definitely appreciate that. Now, if there's a species you would like to see me cover in upcoming episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, then be sure and leave that suggestion down below this video in the comments. It really helps me figure out what you guys are looking for and gives me ideas on future content to make. And if you have any other ideas of different topics I could cover rather than just care and husbandry, questions that you've been wanting answered or things you've been curious about, then go ahead and leave that suggestion down below in the comments as well. And while you're down there in the comments section, just hit that that little arrow below the video, it'll open up the description. There you'll find links to all my different playlists, uh, scientific papers that I've used, some of my favorite places to buy tarantulas, and there's also some affiliate links if you want to support the channel. There's also a link to the tarantulacollective.com, and there's a whole merchandise store there. We've got flat bill hats and beanies and t-shirts, sweatshirts, there's cell phone cases, there's water bottles, there's all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in picking up some merch and helping support the channel, just go ahead and click the link, it'll take you right to the merch store. Sorry to interrupt, but I thought you'd really want to hear this. I was talking to my friend Tanya over at Fear Not Tarantulas, and I was telling her that I was doing an episode on the Ami species Panama this week. She was nice enough to offer everybody that's watching this video a discount code to get your own Ami species Panama. Just use the link down below in the description, and I'll take it straight to the page. Then when you're checking out, if it asks you if you have any discount codes, just use the code Panama. That'll get you 25% off your purchase. This does not apply to any other tarantulas on their store, and you can't use it in combination with any other discount codes. But if you're watching this video, you've got until September 30th to take advantage of this deal. Now, Fear Not Tarantulas does not sponsor these videos. It is not an affiliate link. I'm not getting a commission or anything like that. She's just a big supporter of the Facebook group and the YouTube channel, and was nice enough to offer that to you guys. So if you're interested in maybe adding one of these to your collections, definitely check that out. All right, back to the video. Now, some of the mods and I will be at the North American Reptile Breeders Conference. That's in Tinley Park, Illinois, right outside Chicago. We'll be there October 12th and 13th. I'll pretty much be there all day, both days, either walking around, checking things out, filming YouTube videos, or I'll be at the Fear Not Tarantulas table. Just kind of hanging out with them and checking out their spiders. Now, even though the species may not be the most popular, I think in the near future it will be. Not only is its abdomen and carapace very beautiful, but when you look at it from underneath, the underside of its abdomen has this very cool tiger stripe pattern that you just don't see in a lot of tarantulas. And because there hasn't been a whole lot of research done on this specific species, and the whole genus keeps getting moved back and forth, I'm sure that as time goes by, there'll be some reclassifications and some name changes, but eventually it will find its home and have a very specific genus and species name. So just keep your label maker warmed up and try to stay up to date. If you enjoy species specific care and husbandry videos, then be sure and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so it will alert you every time I upload a new video. I wanna thank you all for checking out this video and joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure you hit that like button. I appreciate that a lot. Well, I hope I get to meet some of you all at the NRABC this fall, but if not, I will see you next Tuesday. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I'm a real one, my day one. Try to up, can't say none. Try dig dirt, there ain't none. I make the money to save up. 10 to 80, my savings. Take to the top from the base one. New car, racing. Fast lane, pacing. With the boo, y'all, that's a flex. Now I'm human, I ain't from another planet. I'ma teleport, might vanish. I'ma wake up, do damage.
Foreign number seven, he's bored though. Working all night, need more though. I remember nights I was poor though. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up.